Hey everybody, welcome back to the Ball and Breakfast Podcast with Wayne. I'm Patrick, uh, signing on for this special here that we have tonight. We've been doing a ton of NFL uh, football lately, but we are going to go back to our our day one baseball here, uh, covering the MLB playoffs uh, starting on Tuesday. Uh, we are looking forward to it. Uh, some really great matchups after you know the regular season just winded up. Uh, and I guess, you know, what we're going to do is cover the wild card rounds. We're going to go into each one of those games. Uh, we'll pick winners. And then we'll talk about the divisional rounds. And we'll pick an NLCS, ALCS rep to get to the World Series. We'll pick a World Series winner. But overall, we're going to cover every team that's in this thing uh, in one way or the other. So uh, maybe we just start off over on the NL, um, go to the 3-6 matchup, Milwaukee Brewers against the Arizona Diamondbacks. Uh, Wayne, what do you think about this one? Yeah, it's, no, this is going to be – I kind of went a little back and forth on this one, but I have a strong conviction of the Brewers uh, pulling out, I think, uh, probably like a 2-1, right? So, uh, I mean, the Brewers, uh, one of the best pitching staffs in all baseball from their starting pitching to their bullpen, and I think that is the key differentiator here. Uh, Diamondbacks, you know, they have – gallon and then they got kelly and i don't know to me that's about it like they don't got too much else after that seawall has been inconsistent at the closer position there and then you know uh this team like in the second half the diamondbacks the second half they just not have they just haven't performed as well as they you know as their hot start there and they've been kind of just you know skating by a little bit trying to win games here and there uh their offense definitely has kept them in some games for sure um, you know, want to give you know the kudos to uh, Corbin Carroll out there, Christian Walker, uh, you know, Cattell Marte as well. Like all those players have shown up, but um, I just think that you know with great pitching uh, and that bullpen too, that bullpen is sick. You know, led by like Devin Williams, but like that that pitching I think will carry them past this first round here against the Diamondbacks. Um, you know, a lot of people are picking this Diamondbacks to, you know, maybe do kind of pull off an upset, you know, be that wild card team that that you know pulls things off. But I don't know for this pitch against this pitching staff in Milwaukee, that's going to be really a challenge, I think, for them. And I think Milwaukee they have enough hitting, enough hitting. They're not great hitting. I think they're like bottom half in terms of like you know most metrics uh, hitting wise. Uh, but that pitching staff that'll hold up, and I think they'll battle through there as you know as much as possible craig council i think he's a solid overall manager and yeah this brewers team i think at least for this case they'll get out of the first round here uh against the the diamondbacks yeah yeah um no i think you hit it on the head it's kind of where i was leading to with with my lead up to this matchup at least you know pitching stands out for milwaukee for sure I mean, some of those guys in the bullpen even behind Williams, uh, Bryce Wilson, Piams, Wilner. Um, I mean, these guys are all sub three ERA guys. Uh, they can mix and match how they really like to. Not to mention, you know, you get through those top three in the Brewers rotation. You still got, you know, Wade Miley, uh, Adrian Hauser. There's other guys there that can, you know, pick up some slack if you need a swing guy or you know, if the game gets top heavy either way. You've got some guys that can just be bridges till – you know, you really need to use some of your lights out bullpen guys. So it's like, I really like that for Milwaukee. Um, they've had enough experience here in the playoffs over the last like few years where I feel like they're, you know, not going to get, uh, you know, overwhelmed by being in the, in the dance. Uh, I think that doesn't, you know, bode the same for, for Arizona. Um, last thing I'll say about Milwaukee, you talked about the hitting. No, I agree. I mean, they've had, they're very mid-level uh, as a unit. I mean, they're, they're kind of a mix of like some, some more or less like established vets, older vets. And then they have, you know, just a trio of young hitters as well uh, with, you know, Wilson Contreras, obviously having like, or I should say, no, yeah. Wilson, right? No, William, William, William Contreras. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always get the two brothers messed up. Uh, William Contreras, uh, Garrett Mitchell and Sam Sal Freelick. I mean, I like, I like some of these guys that they can just, you know, pair up with the Yelich, uh, Carlos Santana, Mark Canna, Willie Adamas. I mean, there's a lot of, uh, yeah, it's just like a lot of, um, you know, scrappy type of guys. I feel like they can move the ball, you know, along, kind of play some small ball, maybe some, you know, Aussie ball in a lot of ways. So, you know, I think that bodes well. Um, they're also the second best team in defensive run saved. So, I mean, to have one of the best fielding teams in their, in their league is also going to help them out. Um, 
Yeah, I just think Arizona, like you're saying, it's you only got a couple guys up top in rotation. Beyond that, I don't really like their bullpen a lot. I mean, Paul Sewold is respectable as a closer, but you know, like you said, the hitting is what's going to probably carry Arizona. If they have any shot here, they're going to have to like out hit, you know, Milwaukee, and they're just facing a different uh, roadblock here uh, as far as pitching staffs go. So, you know, they got to hope that Zach Gallon and Merrill Kelly can just be absolutely shut down in one, games one and two, which is totally possible. But again, what's what's more likely here? And you know. Sometimes we break down the stats too much. I feel like we did this last year in the playoffs and like <laughs> completely bombed. But but this one, I I feel I feel pretty good about. I mean, Arizona, like you said, like struggled to even make it into this uh, you know playoffs, and uh, you know I think Milwaukee's got enough to to get over the hump. Yeah, for sure. And you know, looking at I guess not the betting odds because hey, now you know I'm an addict and everything. But the Brewers <laughs> are heavily. They're, they're favored the second most amongst these wild card matchups here. So it's not just us. It's not just us. Uh, you know, even more so than the, what's happening over at the AL there. So, yeah, for me, again, playoff baseball, that pitching, pitching is really, I think, what stands out. And yeah, Brewers, too, at home, since they do have that home field advantage, um, I think that's going to be essential uh, for them over there. Uh, and then, yeah, the, uh, the Diamondbacks, younger team a little bit there. So, you know, on the road, playoff games, like a lot can happen there. And that's just where I don't feel too good about them. Whereas, yeah, battle-tested Brewers team, uh, led by Craig Council in the manager position, like I just feel pretty confident about that. So, Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if if you want to have anything, you'd rather have the elite pitching and some, maybe like hope on some timely hitting than to mm-hmm. have, you know, a very thin pitching staff. And, I mean, for Arizona, it's it's kind of, Again, middle of the road type hitting as well. Some top heavy yeah. you know, talent in the lineup, like Christian Walker, Corbin Carroll, like these guys, Kettle Marte, all stars. But beyond that, it's kind of like, you know, some younger guys and then a mix of like some really aging vets on that team. So, um, yeah, I think we both kind of agree here. Milwaukee uh, moving forward to the next round. Um, kind of look at the other matchup here in the NL, looking at the the four or five. Uh, matchup between the Philadelphia Phillies and the Miami Marlins. Uh, Wayne, what do you think? You know, I, <laughs> I've went through so many back and forths, I think with this one, cause it's like the Miami Marlins, like they're pretty hot right now. Like they, they're eight, I think it was like 18 to nine in September. Uh, so, or whatever it is uh, updated. Now. I looked up some of these stats yesterday, so <laughs> subject to change there, but yeah, you know, one of the better records in September. So coming in, you know, pretty hot there. That being said, there's a lot of detractors, I think, from me thinking like, oh, this Miami Marlins team, which Miami Marlins or, you know, Florida Marlins in previous past in the playoffs, you, you got to look out for them. I think they have, they're like two, two out of three, two out of four uh, playoffs. They've won the World Series in which I'll take those odds, you know, so uh, but, you know, not having Sandy Alcantara, not having uh, was it Yuri Perez as well, like. You know, they shut him down there and you know, be, it, it would be nice to have him kind of there like in, in it more, maybe more of a, of a relief role as, instead of like starting pitching. But, hey, it's the new age of baseball. I, I get it now. Um, they still have some solid pitchers there, obviously, though, with uh, Jesus Guizardo and then Braxton Garrett, uh, Edward Cabrera. Like there's still some solid pitching there. Um, but I don't know. This Phillies team, like they're they're they're. I, they're, I feel like they're much more balanced than what they were last year, right? Uh, and they went to the World Series last year. And I think going into this playoffs, I, I think that they're more so maybe on a mission there. Like Bryce Harper's playing first base now and everything. And Kyle Schwarber, he's more of the DH as opposed to like in the outfield, which I feel like that's just a better overall suit for everybody um, than what Johan Rojas uh, out there in center field. Like, I feel like they're better in the outfield defensively with uh, with everything there. I know they don't have uh, uh, Hoskins, you know, got injured early in their season, but, you know, they still have enough hitting. Their bullpen is better. Uh, you know, Craig Krimble uh, out there in the closer position. Um, is he, you know, uh, Atlanta Braves, uh, you know, maybe five, ten years ago <laughs> type of Craig Krimble? No, but I think he's better than what, you know, maybe the Phillies have had in previous past. And Jose Alvarado, you know, better pitcher, better relief person uh, this season. Uh, sub two ERA and, you know, showcased a lot last season, built up some, his confidence. And I think, yeah, this season has just been lights out. So um, 
yeah, I have the Phillies, uh, you know, maybe getting two. I don't know if they sweep, but, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if the Phillies sweep this. In my opinion, I just think that even though the Marlins are hot, uh, yeah, there's just a lot of momentum, I feel like, with uh, the Phillies, you know, and kind of what their mission and what they built off last season. So I, I think the Phillies here, uh, you know, maybe a sweep, but, yeah, definitely a 2-1. Okay. Um, man, for this one, I am, uh, yeah, I mean, on the year, the Phillies, uh, you know, they lost the season series to the Marlins. It was, uh, you know, six to seven. So in a lot of ways, like Miami's put up a really good fight against them at home, Philly is two and four against Miami. So that's kind of, you know, boon to, to at least the Marlins on that, in that front. But, you know, I, I do see what you're saying. Like Miami had the, you know, over the last 30 days had the better record. Uh, one of the best in the league, actually uh, riding in pretty hot. I think the, the losses of Sandy and Yuri Perez are going to be big for them. I mean, to go into a playoff, uh, you know, series for the first time in a while, um, I know they went 2020 in the shortened season, but this is a new team, you know, Luzardo, Braxton Garrett, Edward Cabrera, like these guys, they're not really battle tested. Um, I worry about that. I mean, especially a team that, at least last year, went all the way to the World Series uh, in the Phillies. I mean, hitting wise, that team is pretty balanced. You know, lefty versus you know versus lefties versus righties, their numbers are pretty much the same. Uh, Trey Turner was one of the hottest hitters in the second half. Uh, he gets to feast on a couple lefties here to start it off. Uh, Castellanos had a bounce back year this year. I'm sure Harper can hit lefties. I'm sure Schwarber can still get on base. Other things like that. Alec Bohm had a good year. I just there's a lot of firepower here. And I imagine a lot of confidence. I, I do worry about the Phillies endurance in this year's um, playoffs, just based on the fact that Nola had a really down season this year. I mean, I think he was like mid four ZRA and that's totally not him. Um, I think Zach Wheeler gets the bump, you know, in game one and he had a really good year, but yeah, I mean, beyond those pitchers, I mean, like you already talked about the bullpen pretty much in full, like they have a pretty good mix of lefties and, uh, Soto and Strom as well. And then, you know, they can bring Ranger Suarez or Christopher Sanchez out of the bullpen as lefties as well. It's like, they've got some pretty good um, depth in terms of pitching. And I don't really feel like the Marlins have as much depth after losing a bunch of big guys and their bullpen's not as deep either. So, you know, if Miami wins, you know, games, I don't know, they're going to have to really like scrap together runs, I think. And, you know, Arise is the type of guy who can help, you know, set tables there. Uh, they're just going to need probably a lot from Solaire and Jazz Chisholm and, you know, some of their other uh, boppers, Josh Bell, maybe Jake Berger. We'll have to see. But I think this one will be a tight matchup. I think they go back and forth a little bit. Um, I could see this going four or five games. So um, we'll just have to see. But I'm going to pick the Phillies, uh, I believe, as well, but uh, in a deeper series. Yeah. No, I mean, I get it. I mean, Jake Berger. How about, I mean, oh, I know. I was like, why could he do this with the White Sox or whatever? But hey, that's just, that's just how the, you know, the ball rolls there. But yeah, uh, you know, if Sandy was here, if Sandy was here, not even just both Sandy and uh, Uri, but it's like, if Sandy was here, that's a difference maker for me. And like, like I, I would probably pick the Marlins actually, you know, kind of pulling off this upset. Uh, if Sandy was here, but you know, I don't have as much confidence in Jesus Lizardo and Braxton Garrett there. Um, and then, yeah, I think with the Phillies, if it does go to a game three, uh, you know, I, I think they might go with uh, Suarez over uh, Tejuan uh, Walker over there. I think Walker, I, I think I read something, he has like a seven ERA in the first inning, like he's that bad in the first, yeah, he's not, it's not just like, uh, whatever, you know, he's got a four ERA, and I think he leads the team and wins even, but. And even it, it, with that too, like they're 21 and 10 when he's starting. So like, okay, great. Uh, but maybe not the first inning. Like that's just not his MO. So maybe he's like a long relief in case one of the, you know, Aaron and Noah gets, you know, rocked a little bit here and there. So uh, yeah, you know, they, they seem to win though when he does show up, but yeah, not when he starts. That's a lot of confidence that's going to be lost. A lot of anxiousness that's going to happen, you know, if, uh, if the Marlins were to go up, you know, in the first inning by like three or four runs, uh, and then the Phillies have to make it up. So, um, but yeah, all that being said, I agree. I'm still going to go with the Phillies here. Uh, I know there can be said about the uh, 
Philly's having a 15, 13 like record or a kind of a mediocre record in September, but last season they had, I think it was like an 11 and 14 uh, record or something like that. So in September, so all, all like it doesn't really mean too much there. Uh, but yeah, with this roster, more development, uh, either, uh, I like the outfield defensively a little bit better, uh, but better bullpen. Yeah. I'm going to go with the Phillies here. And I do need to modify a little bit of what I said. I think I was mentioning four or five games, uh, obviously to three games in this, uh, wild card round. I constantly get that confused as we kind of move into a <laughs> divisional series, which in the past used to just be yeah. this opening round here. So yeah, I think this one goes three games, but we'll stick with the Phillies here two one. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, they feel like they've been changing up the the wild card, trying to make it more interesting for a while now. So we'll see. <laughs> Hopefully, they just keep a little bit of consistency going forward. So yeah, yeah. Is that a spin drift? No, I'm with you, <laughs> oh, dude. You know, the only thing I drink on ball and breakfast is spin drift. Uh, <laughs> we we're still waiting for some extra attention from them. Uh, it was waiting for that like or that comment nice. or reshare of our reel. It hasn't happened yet, but. I have faith it will. So we'll work on it. Yeah. I got some pineapple uh, this afternoon. So yeah. <laughs> awesome. Dude. Awesome. We're, the movement is starting. The movement is starting. Uh, um, anyways, so we have our, our NL and first off, let's uh for Milwaukee, Arizona, what do you think? Is it, do you think there's going to go to a certain amount of games or you think it's two Oh, or what do you think? I think I, I think two zero, I think, you know, between those two pitchers, yeah, I think it's going to go to game three between, you know, either Merrill Kelly or Zach Gallen. But one of them should be able to, you know, pull off a victory, albeit, you know, I, I anticipate uh, the Brewers probably going to go with um, Corbin Burns maybe first, uh, maybe, uh, is it Brandon Woodruff and then Peralta? I'd imagine something like that. Maybe Peralta's game three. Uh, one of those players is going to be able to win that third game, I think, for them. So that's probably where I'm going to lean to. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm going to, based on what I think of Milwaukee, I think they're going to set a really strong tone here. I think they are I think they go 2-0. Um, you know, mm -hmm. obviously I have a lot of respect for Gowan and Kelly. I think they both had awesome years, and Gowan is definitely in a, like a top 10, top 15 type pitcher in this game. So not to say they can't do it. I just feel like Milwaukee is going to play with a little bit more motivation this time around. And I feel like Arizona might just be a little happy to be there uh, in their first like year in a while. Yeah. I mean, I'll be at like not many people predicted them to, you know, make the playoffs, you know, if we were to have a bet, who's going to make the playoffs, uh, the Padres or the Diamondbacks, you know, most of us would probably pick the Padres. Right. Uh, so, but here we are. And no, I, uh, I think I did call out the Diamondbacks maybe to ha have like a surprise season, possibly. Uh, but obviously, I missed out on a lot of other disappointing teams in this in this playoffs here. So, uh, but how about that? You know, good season I think from the Diamondbacks. I think they can build off this, load up a little bit. You know, in the pitching, uh, you know, fill in some holes here and there on the hitting side too. But I mean, yeah, there's a lot to like I think from uh, the Diamondbacks so far. Yeah. Not to be going down a deep tangent here, but to be going into playoffs without the Padres, Mets, and Cardinals based on what we thought they would be in the National League, like it is, it is absolutely crazy. And uh, yeah. I mean, the years for all three of those teams finished a little bit differently. Some bottomed out completely. Uh, yeah. San Diego actually had a pretty decent end to the year, but um, man, yeah, just shocking. But that's baseball, so yeah. expect uh, similar things to happen here in the in the wild card uh, series. Yeah, or the Yankees, like, yeah, and they had, like, one of the best bullpens. If you told me, like, <laughs> hey, the Yankees with the best, like, bullpen ERA out there, like, to not make the playoffs, like, oh, wait, what? And, yeah, because their hitting just wasn't there this season, so, yeah. Definitely. Well, I guess staying on the American League here, we can go into uh, the 3-6 matchup with the Minnesota Twins and the Toronto Blue Jays. Uh, Wayne, what are you seeing? I mean... I was kind of like on the Twins bandwagon a little bit, but then I had to recall that the Twins are on an 18-game playoff losing streak. And part of me is like, "Wow, is, yeah, I know. <laughs> is that going to... Because, I mean, I was like, this is a really good Twins team. Like, they got solid pitching. Uh, you know, they got a solid bullpen. And, you know, like, they have several starters, that, you know, which in playoff baseball, that's usually good for some 
you know, uh, yeah, in case the starter doesn't have the best start to their game, they can have a starter that goes in there, pitches like three, four innings of shutout baseball. But yeah, I don't know. I, I kind of like went back and forth on this a little bit. And I also have to recall that uh, the the Blue Jays also have, you know, one of the best pitching teams out there as well. You know, one of the better bullpens and then also like one of the better, uh, I think they led the league in ERA or one of the top, I think it was like them and the Brewers were like kind of battling for the ERA league title there. So, um, and then, yeah, they, they do have some boppers out there as well. So it, this one was tough. This one was tough. Um, I think the idea for me and my rationale, this, this was like five minutes before we started shooting here. But I think that, you know, Carlos Correa and Royce Lewis, right? I think both of them have been a little hurt, but they're anticipated to play uh, in the playoffs. I think maybe they go off, you know, come on in a, low, uh, a slow start. Um, you know, maybe they don't hit as well. Carlos Correa usually hasn't hit that well in the playoffs. Uh, he has had his, you know, uh, clutch homers here and there for sure. But, you know, over uh, you know three-game series, that's where, again, you know, against a – a pitching staff that has you know the lowest ERA in baseball, like that's it's kind of hard for me to picture Carlos Correa kind of going off there, especially after the injuries there. So, um, and yeah, this is one of the hottest teams in uh, baseball as well, I believe. You know, so uh, I'm kind of going against yeah the hot team kind of coming in there and and kind of going with the historical trends here. So I'm going to take the Blue Jays here, uh, winning two one. Uh, again, I change this like back and forth like a bunch. But yeah, I'm going to go stick with my guns here. Blue Jays 2-1, uh, you know, with uh, some kind of, you know, maybe the uh, uh, they win the first game uh, and then the, the Twins are able to scrap in some runs, win the second. And then, yeah, I, I think that eventually uh, time just runs out for uh, the, the Twins here. But man, this was a, such a hard one. Uh, went back and forth a bunch. I, I really like this Twins team, but Pat, what do you think? Yeah, um, I'm, I'm thinking about the offense for the Twins. I mean, there's so many question marks, like you said, with Royce Lewis, Correa. You know, they won't have Joey Gallo. Buxton, we're not really sure. Like, it, there's a lot of holes there, and I just don't know if they have enough hitting to fill it. Um, that said, I mean, looking at the Blue Jays' rotation, some really great professional pitchers there. Um, I don't know if one stands out as being like truly dominant. I think Gausman's probably the closest thing they have to like a dominant starter. But I think that like Bassett, Berrios, uh, Ryu, Kikuchi, depending on what mix they go with, I would probably think they go um, Bassett, Berrios. But like those guys, they had up and down seasons. I mean, they had really good counting stats when it was all said and done. But those are guys that can get attacked um, if if they're you know, not on their best games, but, you know, I don't know. I mean, I guess looking at it, I mean, Toronto overall is, is becoming a team that, you know, is once kind of known like perennially just for their hitting. I think they completely shifted mindsets this year. Um, I think with that shift, I mean, they ended up with the top defense in the league um, by most, uh, you know, advanced metrics pitching wise top four in the league. I think they also have a pretty solid back end of their bullpen with Romano, Miza and Swanson. So it's like, if any of these starters happen to go five or six, I think they can like truly trust the guys behind them, which is a really good thing for Toronto. And they actually took like a little bit of a hit in their like offense this year. I mean, they were middle of the league, but you know, you go down the list of guys in that lineup and you're like, they were middle of the league, you know, you got <laughs> Vlad and Chad yeah. and, you know, Whit Merrifield still a player. Um, George Springer, obviously Matt Chapman had a bounce back year. So like, there's a lot of veteran talent there. Um, you know, if Minnesota was fully healthy and, you know, everything else was kind of held equal, like I, I would think this is a much more competitive series. Um, I really do like Minnesota's starting staff. I think when you look at Minnesota's staff versus Toronto's, it's a coin flip to me. Like you could pick either staff um, in terms of like a one to five, in my opinion. But um, yeah, I just think there's too many holes there for Minnesota in the offense. I don't know what, you know, to really expect. Like is Royce Lewis going to be a DH? If so, does that mean Buxton's not playing? Um, you know, will Korea, you know, Korea be healthy and hitting, um, you know, for the playoffs, he's kind of fallen off a little bit in the last couple of years too, just in terms of production. So, you know, I know he's a big playoff guy, but 
Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's hard to like look down the paper and be like, I can trust, you know, Edward Julian to be our best hitter, Max Kepler to be the guy driving him in and, you know, what else? So, um, yeah, mm-hmm. with that, um, respect enough for the Twins. I mean, still an 88 win, uh, you know, division winner is, is kind of light, but you know, Toronto kind of faltered a little bit to get, you know, into that six seed and kind of get into the playoffs. So, like, for both these teams, I'm not like – um, you know, feeling like they have this this burning drive, but you know, like you said, with the playoffs, you throw the regular season out the window, and it's like, hey, it just all starts now. And uh, you know, yeah. still, Toronto is a team we picked to go pretty far this year, so I'm gonna stick with them, and uh, I think they win this one two zero. Yeah. Oh, okay, two zero. I mean, hey, I'm, I was going to give the you know one over to the Twins there, but I mean, yeah, it, we don't know exactly what we're gonna get from Royce Lewis and Carlos Correa coming back here and Byron Buxton. Like it, it sounds like he might not be able to make it in there. Um, they're definitely going to have a debate on, you know, who's roster spot. Like, do they want, uh, you know, Cody Funderburk or somebody like that <laughs> who had a kind of a light out performance there out of the bullpen there. And, you know, would be nice to have that lefty, you know, kind of, kind of to have their, uh, you know, just, just in case. So, uh, but yeah, this twins team, Overall, like this is a great season to kind of build off of going to next season, and you know a lot of young talent making a splash here. Um, and yeah, you know, who, I, I, I'm anticipating Royce Lewis is probably going to be like maybe the DH there, especially if Byron Buxton isn't going to be you know the person, um, and probably have like Corey Polanco, who very formidable, like you know middle infielder normally. You know, I think he can play third base, so you know, we'll, we'll just have to see how, kind of how they manufacture that lineup, but. Um, yeah, for me, I, I I do like how you mentioned that. Wait, aren't this isn't this Blue Jays team supposed to be like just a bunch of sluggers and all of a sudden like wow they really flipped the switch here? Like George Springer had like one of his worst seasons uh, in, in a while, and you know everybody kind of like I don't think that did they have a thirty homer uh, hitter or something? I don't think they did. I think it was just a bunch of twenty. No, no. yeah, that's hard to believe. That, yeah, that's hard to believe. Yeah, so yeah, I mean if I don't you look know, at Vlad's. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I was going to say, if you look at Vlad's numbers, you're like, he bad like 260 with like a 340 OBP, 26 homers, 90 RBIs. It's like, that's all good and well, but like, that's not, that's not Vlad Guerrero. And Bichette also just didn't have, like, I think he in the past has been like a 30, 40 home run guy. And again, like in the twenties for home runs, but had a really good batting average. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of like, I'm fine with that. I mean, I'm, I'm fine with it. You know, the defense, obviously one of the best in the league, like they made that trade to bring over Varsho and Kiermaier um, to kind of shore up some defense. I think they've prioritized that, you know, Alejandro Kirk more or less like hit the bench a lot for Danny Jansen and others to play catcher. So it's like, I'm cool with that. Like you realize just trying to load up on hitting, like wasn't going to get you, you know, to the mountaintop. So like, yeah, like edit yourself a little bit and see what you come back with. But yeah, I, I just figured they'd have a better year. Like I thought they'd be, you know, winning the division or, you know, just really, you know, going that extra mile this year. And it's like, they just kind of barely scrapped, <laughs> scrapped their way into the playoffs. And it's like, they could have easily missed out. So I don't know, man, it's just like hard to know what, what they'll be. Yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah, who knows exactly, but yeah, you know, at the same time, when you got that talent, like, yeah, everybody's batting stats are zero, zero. Right. So uh, we'll just have to see how this uh, kind of all plays out here. I know that's kind of just how it is, but uh, yeah, you know, two talented teams, I think that we have here, but yeah, one, I think with the Blue Jays are just a little bit fresher, not as many injuries kind of stacking against them here. So yeah, for me, I'm, I'm picking Blue Jays two one, but you sound pretty confident that they'll go two Oh here. So that's, that's all good there. <laughs> I, yeah, just too many question marks with the twins. I think, you know, when you don't have your main guys, it's just like a feeling of like a, I think they'll lack a little bit of confidence, you know, like if you're not with your best players going in, mm-hmm. I think that definitely um, can, can rock teams that aren't battle tested that haven't been there before as much like this, this twins team, this iteration hasn't been there that much. So it's, you know, yeah. we'll just have to see what they come with. So, so you're predicting, uh, not, uh, uh, or was it now since it was 18 and O or O and 18, a playoff <laughs> streak, right? It's going to be 20, uh, to zero. Yeah. So, all right. How about that? Keep it going. Keep it going. <laughs> yeah, keep it going. We're proud of you. We're proud of you. We're proud of you kids. Keep it going. Yeah, keep it classy. Sounds good. <laughs>
<laughs> All right, the four five matchup: Tampa Bay Rays uh, hosting the Texas Rangers. Yeah, I mean, talk about like two teams where you know coming into the season, even midway to the season, like these teams were pretty loaded. Had like their rosters like almost flawless, right? But then life happens, right? You, with the the Texas Rangers, they got some injuries there, like you know with Scherzer, uh, Degrom, obviously. And uh, granted, like the Rangers, they really kind of backfilled with some more starting pitchers that they acquired, but um, you know, still a lot of I think question marks there. And then uh, with the Tampa Bay Rays, you know, they their their middle infield it got kind of weird there. You know, Brandon Lowe got hurt. Uh, Vonder, uh, Franco, you know, chose instead of like, you know, trying to fetch balls, he wanted to fetch like school supplies. So all that happened over there. Um, and then I don't know, a lot of crazy drama, I think has happened in, with these two teams and you know, the Rangers kind of fell off there in the second half and kind of conceded everything over there to the Astros, you know, winning the division. So a lot of things kind of going against the Rangers a little bit, um, but then, yeah, at the same time, the Rays had a lot of things happen to them with their middle infield. And then, um, you know, also losing uh, Shane McClanahan as well, like one of the top pitchers in baseball. So all that being said, I'm still going to I'm, I'm going to pick the Rays here. I think the Rays will win. I'll, I'm going to go to uh, two one. I'll, you know, I'll give some credit over there to, you know, I, I like Jordan Montgomery. I think maybe he he can get a win over there. But um, I like. The Tampa Bay Rays, their pitching staff, what they bring to the table, Glass now. Um, I think he's a stud in the playoffs. Uh, and also, you know, they're going to be at home, right, for for two of the games here, I think, right? So uh, Rays had the best uh, home record, I think, in at least the AL. So for me, I don't know. I, I'm thinking Rays will pull this one off. Despite all these turbulent times that have occurred to them, I just think that they're more equipped, I think, for right now. Having also that playoff experience together, uh, you know, that being said, hey, you know, this Bruce Bochy team, like, those are, he knows how to manufacture some wins out there in, in, in the playoffs. So that's that's definitely an unknown parallel, you know, uh, he, he operates at an unknown parallel universe oftentimes we, with all those, with three World Series wins there with the Giants, which, you know, if you remember those, if you remember those Giants teams, it's not like they were like star studded completely. Like they were kind of scrappy players. So, you know, that being said, uh, yeah, I'm going to go stick with my pick here. Rays, home field advantage. I think that'll kind of pull them off here. Man. Yeah, this is going to be the best matchup in the first round, in my opinion. I think this is going to be a lot of fun. Um, I definitely see this going three games. You know, I kind of just looked at both rosters took a, took a while to like think about how this like how these matchups are probably going to go and like whether or not Tampa still has the same team they had, you know, when they were at their highest points and like it is it's a little bit thinned out now. I mean, you know, don't know if they have obviously Wander Franco is is who knows where, who knows if they'll ever play major league baseball again. That's one. They just lost Brandon Lau for 4 or 6 weeks. He's gone for the rest of the postseason. Brooks Raley was pretty good. Um or I should say Luke really uh, was one of their better hitters on the left side earlier in the year. Um, he probably will be out as well. You know, they brought up junior Caminero who had 30 homers, 90 RBIs, bad like three thirty in the minors, the high minors. So like, he's just getting a taste, but like, that's going to be an interesting weapon for them. I just, um, I was just looking at like pound for pound, which team do I think like has the better roster. And I think Texas is hitting um, for the guys who will actually be in the lineup for, the games, I feel like it just goes a little bit deeper. It's a little bit, um, how would I put it? Just like a more, I just think a more well-rounded offense. I think they can go one to nine. Um, whereas I don't know if I have as much confidence, you know, beyond maybe the top four sluggers for Tampa. I like Paredes, Yandi, Randy Rosarena, obviously, and Josh Lowe. But like, I, I have some question marks throughout the line, you know, the lineup otherwise. Then it just came down to the pitching matchups for me. And like, I do think Glass now is the best starter in this uh, whole series. But looking beyond that, I'm kind of like, you know, Zach Eflin had a good year. Uh, Aaron Savali had a good year with Cleveland, but he didn't have a really good finish with Tampa. So I'm kind of wondering, like, what does Tampa do when they get to game three? If, you know, because I think it'll go there. 
Um, maybe it's a bullpen game for them. They have the better bullpen. Uh, they have a very elite bullpen. Like I like what they can maybe stack up there, but um, yeah, I, I don't know if Eflin for me is like a, a sure thing to get you over in game two. Um, if it happens to go there. So, you know, looking at Texas, at least in their pitching, like for the year, I, I mean, they had um, a bottom half ERA as a team, but I'm like looking at the actual pitchers and I'm like, you stack up Montgomery, Uvalde, you know, Dane Dunning had a great year. Um, you know, could he be, you know, somebody who beats out Savali in a one-on-one or maybe you're pairing like Dane Dunning with Andrew Heaney or something like that. But you just look at some of the relief pitchers, like all the stats don't look amazing for their top guys like Will Smith or, you know, maybe it's a, a Roldish Chapman. Um, I thought LeClerc had a better year. Chris Stratton came over late um, in a trade. So it's like, I don't know. I'm looking at this and like Tampa to me should be the cream, should be the team winning. But like, I think Texas, like you get past glass now, um, man, I think they're going to drop bombs. Like, I think this can be like, uh, they're, I think they're going to put up a lot of runs. Um, I know the bullpen, I, again, I know Tampa's bullpen solid, like really, really solid, but I think Texas has a really good offensive roster here and I think they're gonna have some fun. So I'm yeah. going to go with Texas, uh, beating out Tampa two to one in this series. Yeah. I mean, hey, that's that's good, and I I respect your opinion for sure. And I I I think this is actually kind of bodes well for what Bochi usually does, right? Is and he kind of started this whole thing in the modern day age of playoff baseball, where it's like, yeah, you have a very capable, you know, maybe four or five uh, starting pitcher. It's like, yeah, we can put you in, you know, maybe in the second or third inning if you know the the starting pitcher is struggling. Like this is an intense baseball game. Let's make sure we win this game. So. You know, it they do have like decent depth, right, at the starting pit, starting pitcher position, right? You kind of just named about everybody there, Nathan Avaldi as well. Like, you know, he won uh, uh, twelve games for them here, so yeah, there's there's definitely a lot of ways that this can be played out. Um, so if it does become a bullpen game, like yeah, there's definitely some capable pitchers here. Um, yeah, I'm just I'm kind of just thinking the playoff experience with the Rays. Hopefully, I think that that plays out a little bit more so like as a as a group together. Um, I know, yeah, like Corey Seager, he definitely has a lot of playoff experience there with the Dodgers. But, you know, that's where I just have a feeling that they're going to figure out a way, like they usually do, the Rays. And Glass now, yeah, he's going to at least get them. I don't want to say guarantee one win, but I feel like, you know, if, if he can mathematically get that one win, I think Kevin Cash can try to figure out how to get that other one for them. So, but yeah, Bruce Bochy, <laughs> playoff baseball, you got to love him, though. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I no, I I hear you. I mean, Tampa Tampa is like a classy organization. Like, you know, sometimes I feel like, you know, they can go to the World Series. They've been to the World Series before, haven't yet won it. Um, but then they've also had these early first round exits too, where I'm kind of like they get in they get in like almost every year now. So it's like it's like a team like Texas, like they may not know like when's their next time that they're gonna be able to bust in. And I don't know, they I mean, if they didn't end the year on such a sloppy note, I'd have felt like so much better. And I think we were talking about Texas, like a dark horse, um, especially when they had Scherzer too. Like we mm -hmm. knew what to expect. If we had some like inkling of like when Scherzer would return to, like if he was available out of the bullpen, at least for this series, like that had been kind of interesting. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, man, regardless, I'm just, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of fixed in on how much I like. Yeah. Just their hitting mix and, uh, you know, I think their pitching could scrap some stuff together here. I think they got some good arms. Um, yeah. But yeah, man, uh, this one's going to be good. I I'm looking forward to it. I think this is the best first round series for sure. Yeah, I'm excited about it too. So yeah, I think we're both agreement. It's going to be 2-1. And yeah, Kevin Cash and Bruce Bochy, like, I think that's going to be a nice uh, little managerial chess match over there. For sure. All right, so I guess we'll go back to the NL here. Uh, sets up a couple different National League Division Series for both of us, um, I believe. Except, no, I think we have the exact same yeah. National League. So let's go into it that way. The 3-2 matchup, Milwaukee Brewers uh, going to Los Angeles, take on the Dodgers. Man, you know, this Dodgers team, right? They, they. I think both of us, or at least, no, I, I think I did, right? I think I predicted them. Maybe they take a step back a little bit. Um, I just doubted Mookie Betts, I think, <laughs> 
Uh, we may not Mookie Betts. I just think they, you know, lost Trey Turner. Uh, and, you know, I wasn't really counting on, like, they're starting pitching to really do too much. And they really haven't, to be honest, I think. And, you know, it's really been, like, the nice bullpen. And then Kershaw, you know, they kind of traded for Lance Lynn out there. And he's been formidable. Uh, I know he's, like, under, I think, like, paternity leave or something like that. So, you know, I think it's TBD in terms of when he's going to be coming back. But even then, uh, you know, compared to, say, this Milwaukee Brewers pitching staff, like, that's going to be an interesting battle right between the offensive power that the LA Dodgers had versus, uh, you know, the Milwaukee Brewers pitching staff and then bullpen as well. So, um, I don't know. For me, I kind of have this feeling that maybe this Milwaukee Brewers team, kind of like Craig Council, just kind of scraps in a few runs here and there and is able to, kind of, you know, withhold the other team from scoring, albeit they have like a really talented roster who does have some playoff experience, you know, and future MVPs, right, with Mookie Betts. So, or, you know, possible. I know that Acuna probably has it like kind of on a uh, uh, solidified there, but yeah, I'm going to go with the Brewers. I think the Brewers are going to pull off an upset here. I think the pitching staff, uh, Brandon Woodruff, I think he's like five and one. He's been kind of lights out since he's been back. So, why not continue on that song basically in LA? Uh, you know, pit uh, with that trio. I think of Peralta, uh, Corbin Burns, and then Brandon Woodruff. I think that's enough to you know win three games basically there. And then yeah, with that bullpen, I don't know. I feel I just have a good feeling. I think about this pitching staff and what they're able to do. And then yeah, like you were mentioning before, like Carlos Santana, like they have some vets to pair up with some of their younger talent. Uh, is it their most explosive uh, lineup of uh, recent memory? No, it's not. Uh, but sometimes you don't always need that. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I feel like for me, I'm going to go with uh, the best pitching staff in baseball, or I should say best pitching, just period, team, you know, including bullpen. Uh, go with the Brewers here with an upset, taking over the Dodgers uh, from continuing on the playoffs here. Yeah, yeah, I like it. Um looking at the Dodgers, looking at the rotation, like you're going Kershaw, you lose, you know, Urias, um, a lot of their, you know, Walker Bueller, a lot of their other power arms. So it's like, who lines up second? Bobby Miller, um, Mm -hmm. Lance Lynn, like you mentioned, it's, it's kind of hard to know like who they're going to actually roll out as starters. They're going to have to probably dig into that bullpen, which is a really, really good bullpen um, early and often, I think um, in these games, especially with Kershaw, because, we broke him down too. Like his career, you know, postseason line isn't the most uh, respectable. But you know, if there's one thing the Dodgers can do, it's it's definitely hit. I mean, I love Freeman, Mookie Betts are like two of the best hitters in the game. Uh, Will Smith is obviously you know turning into one of the best catchers in the game. Um, but it's not one of their deepest rosters uh, for sure. I think they've got you know quite a bit of holes around the diamond. Um, you know, to be honest with you, like you're saying with Milwaukee, I mean, if they go two zero against Arizona, for example. They could roll out Brandon Woodruff, um, you know, in game one. And he's he's a he's an ace. He's a staff ace. He's not a number three. Um, you know, they could roll out Peralta or maybe it you know goes back to Burns if they play a three game series uh in the first round. So um just really like that that starting staff. We talked about their bullpen already. We talked about their team in full and, and I'm kinda with you. I think um, you know, Dodgers perennially have like kind of disappointed. I mean, they they won in 2020, but you know, year in, year out, I feel like they're they're a beatable team when you get to the playoffs. I think they seem to fumble the ball a little bit. Roberts seems to make some like questionable decisions and pulling guys. And, you know, I feel like he, he's got these hard pitch count limits on certain folks. And it's like, sometimes I feel like if he doesn't make really like the, the gut rational call when he's supposed to. And I think he, you know, can be a detriment to his team uh, when, when they get there. So um, like Milwaukee, especially if they come out the hole, at least the, in the first round, I have them winning two games. I think they get on like a a, uh, a streak where they just feel like super confident and like able to kind of take on anybody. And I think, yeah, this isn't the Dodgers team that I would, uh, you know, look at and say like, this is their year. So given that I'm kind of like, this could be Milwaukee's. So let's give them a, let's give them a chance. And uh, yeah, I think they, honestly, I think they can beat them in, um, you know, maybe four games here. So we'll see. I mean, I, I'm thinking five minimum, at least for me. I think I'm thinking five. Like you were saying, you know, uh, the Dodgers, they they tend to just try to out-hit teams, right? And that was their whole thing. Like, they're, 
and just go straight to the bullpen, like have a basically have a starting pitcher out there out of default and then uh and then just kind of go to the bullpen and then they're able to manufacture some runs. But I think it's gonna be a challenge in a playoff atmosphere to do that. Yeah, when you got some aces over there uh with the Milwaukee Brewers. So yeah, for me, you know, again, uh gonna take the Brewers here. But yeah, I I'm gonna be a little bit closer, a little bit closer there. Five games, uh five or six games, something like that. Got it. All right. Uh, moving on to our other one, we have the Philadelphia Phillies taking on the Braves in the next round. Yeah. I mean, this is this is definitely going to be a battle. Like you're talking about two teams that have represented the NL in the World Series of recent years. So, uh, but in this matchup, you know, like I said, the Phillies they have you know essentially the same roster that they did last year except just a few more players. Yeah, the record doesn't really showcase an upgrade. You know, Nola didn't have the best year, but, you know, I think he did show some promise uh, in September a little bit on his last couple of starts. So, you know, getting into playoff form there. Uh, but, yeah, I, I'm i going to go with the best team in baseball all year here, the Braves. Uh, part of me wants to pick the Phillies, and I get that, you know, they beat the – the Braves last year, um, Braves, I think they just had like one more victory this year. Uh, albeit their their lineup just raked the ball this year. You know, talking about Matt Olson with like 50 some odd homers, uh, Acuna kind of running, literally running away with the MVP, it sounds like. Uh, you know, go throughout that lineup. Everybody, you know, has, I think has hit like 10 homers and like has like an OPS above 700. So, uh, yeah. This is such a good uh, lineup, I think. And for me, I think that's where it kind of ends in a way of this team. Uh, their lineup is performing a lot better this year, at least compared to the last year. I think they kind of continue that on in this playoffs, albeit, yeah, I do want to say that the Phillies, and they, they feel like they're a better team than they were last year, again, even without Hoskins. So uh, at least a more complete team. But... I'm going to go with, you know, Spencer Strider. I know he didn't have the best showing last season against the Phillies. I think he kind of says, you know what? I've had a full season to build up my confidence. Just 120 games. I know my ERA wasn't the best. Uh, and I, know, I think he always had like a five ERA in September. But come playoff time, I think that stuff becomes just a little bit nastier. And I think he's able to shut down the Phillies more. Max Freed, he's coming back. I think that, that helps as well. Uh, so for me, you know, that's two starters right there. Maybe Bryce Elder, he can manufacture a win there as well. So, and then, yeah, they have a really talented bullpen, uh, that I think can, you know, garner them, uh, some formidable innings there down the stretch, uh, against the Phillies. So for me, I was kind of hesitant on this one. This was definitely another one. I was like, you know, the Phillies have a history of, uh, performing well in the playoffs against the Braves, but in this case, I think the Braves are out for vengeance and I'm going to go with the Braves here. Yeah. Um, tied the major league record for most home runs uh, this season. Nice. You were saying just looking at that lineup, if you put <laughs> their best nine down on, on paper and just look at the talent like top to bottom and the years that they had, you know, guys, you know, I think at minimum had 15 home runs, like their worst, their worst guy probably had 15, 17 home runs or something like that. But, uh, man, I went to a game recently in Washington, to just see them play. And it was just, it was like watching a men's league team. that's just pounding, you know, this old man's team or something against the Nats. And, uh, it was just like one double after another, but just the sounds of these, uh, balls coming off the bats too. I was just, I mean, every single one of these guys can just slug it from, you know, your big guys like Acuna and Olsen to like your smaller guys and Albies and Michael Harris and stuff. So unbelievable, um, you know, the amount of talent they put together in that roster. But, you know, pitching wise, um, I think that's where we have to take a look at the Braves and, you know, mainly like where are Charlie Morton and uh, Max Freed going to come into this mix? Because I think Strider obviously is is who he is. I think he's one of the better you know, pitchers in the game, especially young pitcher, but you know, Max Freed has a coming back from a, you know, IL stint with a finger issue. Uh, I think there is a blister issue with Morton as well. I think he can get back by this playoff series, but they've missed some time. So hopefully they're not you know, out of rhythm, um, especially against a team like the Phillies who can really hit. 
Um, I like Elder as a guy who can be maybe a stopgap, maybe your game two, um, just to be safe. But yeah, man, this lineup, especially when I don't feel like super um, compelled by what the Phillies are going to roll out after Wheeler, um, they're going to they're just going to hammer the ball no matter who's on the hill, in my opinion. And uh, yeah, I think the Phillies, you know, they've had a great year and they have a really you know nice team. I just feel like. They're going to run out of gas. Like, I just feel like they're they're maybe going to run out of gas by the time they get to Atlanta. And I mean, to me, that's just not the team you want to not come in like fully healthy with. Or, um, you know, if they had a better last thirty game stretch or something, where I'm like, they're the Phillies are getting hot as a as a team, I'd feel a little bit more compelled. But I do think Atlanta's on another level to me. They're on another shelf than the rest of these playoff teams. So um, I think this one goes four games. Um, not to mention the Braves were eight and four against the Phillies this year. So I feel like they do kind of have their number this season. And uh, yeah, I think they put them away uh, in this one pretty convincingly. Yeah. I mean, key things will definitely be the the pitching matchups. I think this uh, for this playoffs uh, or, at least, you know, how, how does, how do the Braves pitching get in this playoff stack up against, you know, Bryce Harper ninth inning, right? Can they take him out? <laughs> like, you know, things like that. And those scenarios, I think it will be the key differentiator there. Um, but yeah, you know, uh, Max Freed, I definitely, you know, I don't think it's confirmed yet. We'll, we'll definitely keep an eye out in terms of if he's going to be available. It sounds like they're leaning that he will be available, but I think Charlie Morton, I think they're thinking maybe championship series. So he might miss this round here. So, uh, but yeah, I definitely want to keep an eye out on that. Uh, that being said, yeah, you know, if this becomes like, I don't know, if they, if they're like, hey, Kyle Wright, even though you have like a close to 70 RA, but you, you won 20 games last season, you're healthy, right? Let's let's put you in there, see if you can get like two, three innings, and then we'll we'll, we'll throw it to the bullpen, right? That that just might do it for them. Again, with this uh, this lineup, and like you said, you know, this lineup against uh, this Phillies uh, hitting or pitching squad, like, it, it, yeah, I, I don't know. This <laughs> this team rakes ball. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be a tough one. But, yeah, for me, I don't know. I just feel like it's been kind of a good year overall for the Braves. They have a little bit of mystique, a little bit of swagger to them. And, yeah, I think they'll carry that into the playoffs here. Yeah. Um, so, I guess just staying on the NL, we won't cover an NLCS, um, although – I think we have the exact same one, but who do you think is going to represent the NL then looking at the uh, Brewers or the Braves? Yeah. Funny how we like picked like the entire like, NL like that, but uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah. Hey, this is, this is what you want in a matchup, right? This is kind of like, you know, in MMA, there's like maybe a knockout artist versus like a jujitsu person. So you have the best pitching squad in baseball versus the best hitting squad in baseball. Uh, and yeah, maybe, you know, it's like, all right, do the Brewers have enough hitting versus do the Braves have enough pitching? Um, I'm going to take the Braves here, though. I think the Braves, uh, yeah, they got Mr. Knockout Artist, Mr. K there with Spencer Strider. I think he's enough. Add on Charlie Morton, who, you know, this guy's like 40 years old or whatever. <laughs> like, you know, I, I think he'll, he has plenty of playoff experience. I think he'll kind of come in. You know, I'm sure he's. I think he did like a simulated game. Has been pitching on the side there, so he's trying to stay somewhat fresh. But um, yeah, I think he comes in and is able to pitch. You know, kind of up to par where he's at. You know, mentally there, I think he's just such a vet. So um, and then yeah, having Max Freed, uh, who I think will probably be available then in the championship series. Spencer Strider, you know, Bryce Elder there for sure. You know, if if they are able to get ahead. So you know, I I feel like they have enough in terms of the pitching side to you know, stifle whatever the Brewers is able to do. And then with that, yeah, it's like maybe this does go like a five-game series with that then, in my opinion. Again, you know, uh, that being said, hey, this Brewers team, you know, if they can, if Woodruff, if that pitching squad, you know, Burns, Peralta, if they can just like throw past <laughs> these these hitters, that would be amazing. That would be like old-school baseball, right, where it's like you have the pitching staff just, uh, even though you have like, you know, 50 homer hitters, Barry Bonds out there, you're able to kind of get past them, right? So uh, we'll, we'll have to see that. But I just feel like this Braves team, they got a lot of swagger going on there, and they have enough, I think, to get past any team, even if it is, like, you know, the best pitching uh, rotation out there. Yeah, yeah. It's, you know, it's tough because, yeah, this is the best pitching team um, 
statistically versus the best hitting team. And I think the Braves, when you just look at the names of their pitching staff versus Milwaukee's pitching staff, when healthy, I think they both stack up pretty well. I mean, to go Strider, Freed, Morton against Burns, Peralta, Woodruff, like that to me feels more close than what the Braves are going to roll out there offensively versus what Milwaukee will. And, you know, I'm all for a Cinderella story and stuff. And like, seriously, I'd love to see this happen. Like if Milwaukee does happen to like roll through them or something like that, just by their pitching and getting some timely hitting. But again, like they're going up against maybe one of the best offenses of all time. Like we are seriously considering like, I'm just like, we don't know where Acuna's, you know, uh, career is going to go, but at this moment, he is probably one of the best baseball players we've seen in the last like 25 years, for sure. Like pound for pound. And it just never stops, man. It just never stops when you get through that whole, you know, team. So I think, yeah, I think that's where it, it kind of ends for, for Milwaukee. Um, I think they can make it maybe somewhat competitive, but, Maybe on a game to game basis, I think it gets competitive, but in a best of seven, I think I think this one's gonna go five games for me. And I'm gonna pick Atlanta again um in five. Got it. Yeah, I think that's mine too. So we basically have like the same exact uh I know I feel like. So hey, how about that? Let's play some bets here. Let's win some money. I think that all about settles it. So <laughs> <laughs> sounds good. Um all right, well, let's kick it over to the AL to find out who who's going to be facing the Braves. So let, let's first go to uh, the Toronto, or sorry, mm-hmm. the sick, sorry, the yes, the Toronto uh, mm-hmm. Blue Jays taking on the Houston Astros. We both chose that same matchup. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, sorry, Twins fans, there about bringing up the eighteen straight playoff uh, losses there, but yeah, you know, so. One of the better uh, uh, pitching staffs out there in terms of the ERA and such, um, going against you know this Houston Astros team, uh, who's been to uh, the ALCS like how I think six years in a row, and if they're going to do this, then it'll be I think seven then uh, if my math is correct. So uh, I think yeah they advanced to the seventh one. Pretty simple as that in my opinion here. Uh, I think you know the Astros teams are kind of hit. They're hitting the stride. They kind of went the inverse, right, of what the Rangers, I think, were doing. Like, Rangers, they kind of came out hot. Uh, you know, their pitching, their pitching was doing well and everything. But then the Astros, you know, they weren't that healthy throughout the entire season. But, you know, kind of thinking in the future, right? It's like, oh, we want Altuve to be healthy during the, for the playoffs. Uh, you're on Alvarez. You know, got banged up a little bit here and there, too. And you know, he's hit pretty well, though, consistently throughout the season. Uh, Jose Abreu, I know he was the, kind of the newcomer, didn't perform as well as like maybe he did like with the White Sox, but you know still uh, a solid at bat. I, I think going into this, uh, but they did get Justin Verlander, and I I think that's a, that's a key thing for them. Like you're talking about a future Hall of Famer who's still pitching really well. Um, you know uh, had like a low three ERA, and I think he won he won a majority of his games. I think he had 11 games. And I think he won seven of them. So you know. Having that ace there with the world as a playoff experience, all the confidence in the world, like that really, I think, kind of pushed them to be like, oh, yeah, we are the Astros. We we did win the World Series last year. And that it was a great move, too, because I think the Astros pitching just wasn't there compared to last season. They kind of stepped up a little bit. So, um, yeah, I, I like the Astros here. They're getting healthy kind of right, you know, right at the right time. And they're hitting their stride right at the right time. Maybe not the best season, but kind of like maybe the the other Texas team, and that's uh, in the NBA, the San Antonio Spurs. Like, you know, all right, we'll do a little bit of load management, get by the season, and then once it comes playoff time, we're we're ready to you know, kick it up a notch and you know perform to the best and as healthy as possible there. So for me, I kind of think that in that same way. I think I'm going to pick the Astros here. I'm going to say it'll be competitive. I, th- I think maybe six games, six games. I'll I'll leave it at that. So, but yeah going to have the Astros going to the seventh consecutive championship series here in the AL. Yeah. Yeah. Um, man, I see this one going seven games actually. Mm. Um, I do. I do. Cause I like, I like how both these rosters are configured. I think they match up really well pitching wise, especially with Houston's pitchers taking a step back from where they were last year, like each one of their top three 
take took a step back. I mean, Verlander, he's not the Cy Young that he was last year for Amber Valdez. I had much higher expectations for him. He was he was good, but he wasn't he wasn't like what I thought he could be. I thought he could be easily a number one uh in this league. And then Christian Javier actually stumbled a lot to the point where you know, whether it's him, a combination of Hunter Brown or JP France, like, we'll just have to see like what they plan to do there. So I'm a little concerned, like how deep some of these guys may be able to go, uh, especially against a quality hitting team like Toronto. Um, I think Houston, they always roll out a really strong bullpen. They do it again this year. And their hitting lineup was again, equally as impressive. Jose Abreu actually had a really good second half after having a miserable first half. His numbers look terrible on paper, but I think, I think he's, you know, he's getting back to the guy that I think he was, you know, last year for the White Sox, who, which is a quality baseball player for them. So, you know, I think Houston brings a little bit more, you know, to their lineup than Toronto does. I mean, it's a, it's not a very big margin, but I think they, they do have them beat there. Um, yeah. I just see this one seesawing a bit. I think this, you know, Toronto team has quality pitchers as well. Veteran pitchers that have been there and done it some really good hitting with obviously the, some of their young studs to some of their more uh, like solid veterans across the lineup. So, you know, um, if there's one thing, like you said, going for Houston right now, like for them to win that two seed, for them to get that two seed and get a nice like earned break for themselves, like that was so big because had they kind of fallen into uh, what could have maybe been that five seed matchup, like, that had been a tougher go for them against Tampa, in my opinion. So, um, you know, they're lucky. I feel like they're, they, they, they won at the right point in time to get themselves this buy. And I think that that little extra boost there will, you know, have them win one more game, but I see this one being, you know, really tight. Yeah. Really tight, really tight. And, you know, both like really good lineups. Uh, obviously the Astros, you know, they have maybe better numbers overall there, but, you know, like you were saying, like this, this, uh, Blue Jays team, it's, it's stacked. It's just, yeah, for whatever reason, like the sliders, the video game sliders went over to pitching a little bit this year, uh, for the Blue Jays. So, but yeah, I mean, how about that? If, you know, the Astros can pull this off going to seven straight championship series, like, you know, I, I don't know what we can look back at the history books, what does this all look like? And all the banging and we, you know, all, all these other charades that are kind of happening in the background, we could knock them for that, but you know, it's quite an impressive feat regardless of all that. And, you know, uh, yeah. You know, when you have players like Jose Altuve, who'd been there, done that Bergman, uh, Kyle Tucker, and then yeah, Jordan Alvarez, who, you know, you had like a, a big poppy kind of moment there last season. So, uh, you know, this, this is a stack lineup. They're going to be generating some runs, their experience. So it's really going to be hard to go against them uh, in that. And then, yeah, but we'll see about the starting pitching. We'll see how that's how, you know, if they're able to uh, have some formal starts there. Yeah. With uh, Framer Valdez, who, yeah, like you mentioned, maybe didn't perform to the best. And then, yeah, with after Valdez and then also Verlander, what else do they got? You know, is Christian Javier is going to, are they going to start him even? Like, I don't know. So definitely be interesting to look at that versus, yeah, the, Blue Jays, you know, one of the best defenses and then having good ERA uh, type of pitchers out there, that could be enough for them to kind of, you know, uh, put some quality starts there. But yeah, I don't know. For me, I'm, th I'm thinking six, but yeah, it's going to be a close series. It's going to be a well thought out series, but yeah, I think we're both here for the Astros. Gotcha. Um, so I think our division or other divisional series is a little bit different. So why don't you go, go ahead and set up uh, Tampa Bay against uh, the Baltimore Orioles. Yeah, Tampa Bay versus Orioles. I mean, I think I was looking. I, I I believe that the Orioles like won convincingly this uh like the regular season series, and I I know it's a different uh playoffs. I think it was like ten to three or something like ridiculous like that. Uh, the Orioles won versus uh the the Rays here, and you know this Orioles team like they're very formidable. Uh, you look at I I, I mean first off like nobody I, hardly anybody pick them to win the division, right? I think a lot of people saw, you know, like the Yankees kind of being in here, but we saw what they were able to do with like the a mixture of the young talent and the like most of their players are like that 25, 28 range, which I don't know how the GM like did it, but like that's usually prime. That's like usually like running backs when they're all 25 years old, right? That's usually prime, prime years. And they all kind of just went in the same cycle here. You know, San 
Santander had a great season. Uh, you ran uh, you know, rookie like uh, Hunter Garner in there, uh, Gunnarsson in there as well. Um, and then Roshman, like, you know, one of the better catchers, you know, in, in the game. So uh, Mountcastle, like, you know, good, good in first baseman there too. So Adam Frazier had a solid season at the second base. And yeah, they're pitching. Um, I mean, their pitching was definitely, for me, it was like a little up and down. Uh, you know, it's hard to say, like, what, like uh, 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 Kyle Gibson, like, is he, like, going to be actually pitching there? He had like, close to five ERA, albeit, you know, he won a pretty good amount of games there. And, you know, what's he going to bring it in the playoffs? That's definitely where I have some question marks here. But, you know, like I was, I think we we're talking about with the Rays, right? It's like, after Glass now, it's like, okay, what other kind of pitchers can you bring up there? that are like you're you're an ace you're an ace that we know can win compared to you know whoever the uh the the orioles can have and that's where i feel like you know again the orioles they're gonna be they got the home field advantage here i think they i think they're able to pull this one off i think they're able to get past the rays here and then yeah for the alcs matchup uh against the the houston astros and i think that'll be a fun series right with the astros the veteran squad there with bunch of youngsters uh there over you know at the orioles so yeah for me gonna pick that that match up there gotcha okay um yeah i mean what can i say about baltimore i mean at this point they have the top farm system in the game they have the best one of the best teams in you know the game the best team in the american league at least um especially at their timeline definitely wasn't something i think most people expected for them you know, to go from being the last place team last year to the best team in the American League, um, just crazy. But if you look at some of the, you know, the players, you know, Rushman, like you're saying, uh, you know, uh, Keston Jerstad uh, just got called up, Jordan Westberg. Um, you know, they're going to be bringing up Jackson Holiday next year. They obviously brought up Grayson Rodriguez, who had a much better second half than the first half. He was getting, you know, lit up early on and being very inconsistent, but, you know, really turned into a better starter and he might be, you know, if not their one, their two, uh, after Kyle Bradish. But mm -hmm. no, I think, you know, looking at the the rotation of Baltimore, um, it's just not a playoff rotation to me. It's not a playoff rotation yet. And, you know, mm -hmm. you're going up against Texas who has a bunch of quality hitters, in my opinion. Um, that was like the third, you know, most runs generated this league, you know, this year. Um you know, for a team, uh, these two, when they matched up throughout the year, were three and three against each other. So completely split. But I do think the playoffs brings an extra wrinkle of pressure of, you know, who's seasoned, who's not. Jordan Montgomery, been to the playoffs. Ivaldi won World Series. You know, Seager played with the Dodgers. Simeon, he's been around the block a little bit. Like, I just feel like there's much more leadership. There's much more comfort, I think, coming out of Texas than there is out of Baltimore. Um, that said, I think, you know, Baltimore is a team that to me is like the Atlanta Braves. I think this team over the next five, six years is going to be a complete powerhouse. And I think they start to understand that they're going to need more pitching down the line. So they may go out and get, you know, a better free agent pitcher, you know, outside of Jack Flaherty, who completely <laughs> flamed out for them and is probably not going to not going to see an inning here. Uh, so. I digress a little bit on what I think Baltimore's future is, but I think for the present, I have Texas. Um, I think they're going to take it to them a little bit. I mean, if it's not five games, it's going to be six for me. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it's a tip of the cap to the Orioles. To me, it's like watching that first, you know, real playoff team for the White Sox when they, you know, went in 21. It was like um, kind of seeing like, hey, I see the big blueprint here. I see the picture, but like the Houston Astros are coming to town. So like, how are we going to respond to something like that? Texas isn't quite the Astros in the same like analogy here, but like they've got enough veteran presence there. If they get Scherzer back too, I just, yeah, that's a complete wild card to me, but even without them, I think they still have enough to beat them. So yeah, I'm just going to go, going to go with the Rangers here. Yeah. I mean, young pitching, like that's, that's, that's the wild card. Like, you know, you don't know if a pitcher is necessarily a young pitcher, right? If they're, necessarily going to kind of choke if you will or if they're just going to play lights out right you're talking about like the differences between a clayton kershaw and like a madison bumgarner right where it's like yeah regular season you know kershaw all the way like you know multiple cy youngs you know i think he won an mvp in there too and like led, led the league like you know had all the triple crown awards all that right 
But in the end of the game, in, like if you want a pitcher to play in the postseason, which one are you going to pick? I'm going to pick Madison Bumgarner nine out of ten times. No, hundred hundred percent of the times there. So that's just kind of the feeling here, and we don't know exactly what you know Cal Bradish or yeah Grayson Rodriguez are going to bring in the postseason playoffs, but. You know, regular season success, you know, th these are two of the best pitchers, I think, that they have. Um, and, yeah, they're they're definitely going to have their starts here. But, yeah, the rest of the squad, there's a lot of question marks. You know, there's a reason why they traded for uh, Jack Flaherty, right? It's just to, like, see, okay, does he have anything? Like, that, can he bring something to the table? Um, yeah, had, like, a 7 ERA or something like that, or 6 ERA, just did not perform that well. So, you know, he probably won't make the rotation there. But then, yeah, you, you bring in the Rangers. Again, Bruce Bochy. Like this guy knows how to manufacture wins in the playoffs. And I think that could be the X factor, you know, with the teams that you have here at least. So, um, no, I think that's, that makes sense for a pick. And then, yeah, I, I do like, uh, yeah, like the like five rotational players or starters that they have there that they can, you know, have three of them start and then have the two, you know, fill in when, when they need to there. So that, that really goes a long way, I think for them. Yeah. Um, I also think one big missing piece for Baltimore is their closer. Uh, they won't mm. have Felix Bautista there. Um, yep. That's a huge reason why they, you know, obviously, uh, you know, got to first place, were able to lock up the league um, in the way that they did. And, you know, their, their bullpen gets, you know, dramatically thinner uh, once you lose him. I mean, Yenier Cano is like, was an amazing setup man for him. Uh, you ask him now to move into the closers role. They still have some pretty good arms out there. Um, you know, some guys that were sub four uh, on the year, but it's like, it's huge, man. That is huge. And they need every mm -hmm. single arm they can get. And it just feels like they're just not, they're not well, they're not equipped enough mm -hmm. um, on either side of the ball at this stage to be, you know, outclassing teams uh, in a very like dramatic fashion. Like I just, I think they go down the first round. Yeah, I, I think it's one of those like they're a young team, but yeah, they're they don't necessarily have the the young or they don't have the 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 pitching just to like you know persevere them and, and get some innings for them. I, I think that's just the biggest thing here. So to set themselves up for you know a, a Ryan Mountcastle to like hit a home or homer or grand slam or something like that, or you know kind of will their way to win and find those those. Uh, those runs in a close game like that's going to be the battle i think is keeping it close for this team and then yeah you know not having felix batista to close out games like that's it's, it goes really far you know we talk about closers and the whole money ball thing it's really nice to have that like mariano rivera type of uh closer out there uh at the in the playoffs just to, like you know you have that confidence that things are going to work out there where it's mariano or kenley jensen type of player right so um, yeah, that's going to be hard. And Yenny or Cano, like, if you look at his, you know, I guess if you look at his stats, like, this is his first good year. Like, he wasn't that good the rest of the year, so, or the rest of his career. And it, so we'll see, though, what happens, I think, you know, when those situations come about. Uh, yeah, against a stacked, like, Rangers type of squad or, you know, uh, yeah, uh, whatever team, I guess, that the Orioles face here. Yeah. So I guess with that, um, it sets up two different AL, uh, CSs for, for both of us, but, um, who do you have repping the AL in the world series? Yeah. I mean, you know, I, this is, this is definitely going to be a tough one, I think for me. Uh, but you know, I, I'm, I'm going to pick the Astros. Yeah. I'm going to pick the Astros here. Uh, yeah, it, it sounds cliche and everything like, oh, picking, I guess the, the, the world series winner from last year, but. Yeah, I just like that they were able to kind of just manufacture and move their way through the season. And then, hey, now they're all kind of healthy, basically ready to go here compared to like maybe some of the rest of the teams out there. So, um, you know, yeah, against this uh, young team here with the Orioles, uh, it's for me, again, yeah, the experience, I think that just out outweighs everything. And I think that the pitching, the bullpen, I think those are the two advantages of the Astros that they have here. And, you know, we were talking about before with the Orioles, you know, not having Felix Batista. That's going to be hard, I think, yeah, especially when you have like a Jordan Alvarez or a Jose Altuve there in the ninth inning, right? Like if there's a man on, good luck with all that. And, you know, it's a one score game. So that's going to be tough, I think, for them. And I think the Astros, they're going to get by with this, their experience here. Um, you know, 
I'm going to say like six, seven games, something like that. But yeah, I don't know. I just feel like the, the Astros are the scariest team here, in my opinion, just because of all the playoff experience that they have. And yeah, their team is just healthy. Are they as dominant as maybe years past? No, but I don't think they have to be. And yeah, they have enough talent to to win here. So, but yeah, I have Astros going to the World Series. Let me know what y'all think about that. But yeah, it's uh, I think it'll be a good one here. But yeah, Astros, six or seven games. Yeah, um, this this whole idea of them getting a bye was so big for them. Uh, mm-hmm. It just helped them to obviously reset. Um, I think bringing Hunter Brown, if I were if I were them, you know, obviously he had a great first half. And then he completely struggled second half. But I just, this is his first time like really being stretched out for an entire season. I think what you do is you put him in the bullpen. Mm. And I think he's going to be just an extra piece for them. Just extra. Yeah. Just an extra piece for them um, going into, you know, this playoff um, run of theirs. I'm with you. I, you know, I think they have a good matchup on their hands with Texas. I would love to see Max Scherzer come back, be able to like duel it out with Verlander in some fashion. Um, I just think it would make for great, you know, drama and theatrics and stuff for that, for that round. But, you know, Texas is going to hit regardless. And I think they're going to, you know, do pretty well. Um, I think once again, to the bullpen of Houston's, I think, you know, it might be a little bit tougher sledding for them, but, you know, on the other side, it's just that, you know, Texas isn't necessarily like the deepest pitching team. I think I have, there's a lot of arms in there that I like, but, you know, Houston's lineup is just, it not only produces, but there's just so many like Hall of Fame caliber guys, um, just high, high, I don't even know what it like, high confidence type of players. I was going to say high character, but we're talking about the Astros. Um, <laughs> you know, I like Abreu, <laughs> I like El Tuve, I like Bregman. Um, you know, Chaz McCormick had a really good year this year. Like, I think he had like 20 over 70 RBIs. Like, that's just another guy you stack out there. Um, they had, um, What's his face? Uh, Diaz is a backup catcher. Yanier Diaz, like 20 mm-hmm. homers plus as a backup catcher. Uh, it's 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 very deep. Obviously, Kyle Tucker, I miss, but like he's probably their best player overall in offense. And it's like, yeah, man, it just runs so deep. Love the bullpen, the starting pitchers. Like while they didn't like reach their potential, you know, as, as far as like what we've seen in years past, I think they're still quality, quality pitchers. And yeah, they're, they're going back to the World Series and it's going to, yeah, be Atlanta and Houston for both of us. So how about that? <laughs> how about that? Yeah. I mean, I think, yeah, we picked basically the same uh, kind of, you know, way, like something the same, like, you know, I think we're both high in the Brewers here. And then, you know, obviously I think our biggest difference was like the turnout of that four or five, the, the Rays and, and the Rangers there. But I mean, apart from that, like, yeah, we had the same kind of breakdown of what's going to happen there. So uh but yeah i don't know for me it's it, it was kind of just this braves team i feel like they got a lot of they, they're just a hit squad like they're nasty as hell and yeah the experience and then the of the astros and yeah how they're coming in now healthy and everything like uh, for me it's just gonna be a nice clash there so i'll be, it'll be a fun matchup now yeah and this isn't where like i think atlanta finds their way to the world series probably easiest among most teams, but when they get there, this one's going to be, it's mm-hmm. going to be ratcheted up and it's going to be fun to watch. I still, every single one of Atlanta's players are like in their primes, like they're in their absolute primes for me. Uh, Houston has all the names. They in aggregate are really good on offense. They have, you know, really good pitching, but yeah, I don't know. I'm just looking at the Braves team and you go, you know, player to player. And I'm like, this is this player's best season and they're pro- this player's probably in the prime of their career right now. Whereas I look at Houston and I'm like, they had good years, but I'm not as sure that each one of them like are having their best year or are currently in their prime besides Kyle Tucker. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then, Hey, this is, you know, interesting kind of a matchup here of, you know, the 2021 world series, right. <laughs> Where the, uh, the Astros, yeah, they lost to the Braves there too. So, um, but yeah, like t- to your point, there was a lot of things like that, that, you know, I was kind of contemplating on where, yeah, I think the, the Braves there, um, I mean, Akuna is definitely like the difference maker. He's probably the best overall player in this, 
entire like World Series that we're you know kind of conjuring up here. Um, but yeah, you look at the veterans out there that the Astros do have. I mean, Verlander, he's definitely the one to look at there. And you know, it, it, that's definitely going to be an interesting matchup of, all right, you have Verlander, that veteran presence. You know, now all the Astros, uh, you know, they're pitching. All of them are, a lot of them came from last year. And then, yeah, now you have the Braves too. Yeah, they have some of the same faces that they had during the 2021 World Series, right? Max Fried. Um, so, but now now with Spencer Strider now in a bigger role, that's going to be interesting to see because he has the stuff to just shut out, you know, this team or any any player. But, you know, he did have a 3, 3.8 ERA, tends to, you know, give up the long ball here. And that, that should be an interesting, I think, play out against, you know, this Astros team too, which they can hit, they can hit homers too against this, uh, you know, this Atlanta Braves team. So yeah, it'll be a fun matchup, I think. Yeah. I will say if I was the Braves and I was going into the series, I would, you know, stats aside, I'd, I'd, I'd much rather have Freddie Freeman than uh, Matt Olson, just in terms oh. of like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Just from a, from a, like, I know if I go into a series of Freddie, like he's going to produce and he's going to be comfortable. And like, I don't know about, I mean, Matt Olson could be one of those X factors where you're like, you know, he's been in the playoffs before with the A's, but you know, in the same sense, like some of these guys are a little bit new to this, like Michael Harris, you know, going Mm -hmm. deep into a playoff series or Sean Murphy, um, buying the dish. Um, Mm -hmm. you know, these are obviously great players, but yeah, I mean, Houston's been there, done it. Uh, they're all comfortable. They've all pretty much been there. So, man, I, I don't know. This is gonna be a lot of fun, man. I, I mean, easily six, if not seven, for me. I'll go. I'll go Atlanta and six. Yeah, I'm. I'm thinking. I'm probably thinking the same thing. I'm gonna go all the way. I'm gonna say Atlanta and seven. I think this is gonna be a clash of the Titans. Uh, I think the key thing is, you know, once they get Charlie Morton right in, in the championship series, there. Uh, that should help them, you know, with solidify that pitching staff. Uh, and then, yeah, you know, if they're able to keep healthy, I think that's the thing throughout this playoffs here. Like they have the pieces getting healthy right now, right? With Morden, uh, yeah, projected to be the CS. And then Max Freed was like, he'll be able to come back, hopefully, you know, for the divisional playoffs there. So, but yeah, having those two, two pitchers and then having Spencer Strider out there, maybe Bryce Elder, you know, for a game or two here or there as well. I think that's enough for them. That's enough pitching there for them to to win. And then, yeah, with that that hit squad, man, uh, <laughs> yeah, I would have liked Freddie Freeman too. But you know what? Olsen, he's a local guy. He had 53 homers there. He's a slugger. Uh, maybe he'll get maybe he'll turn on a few there and uh, change some people's minds. So, But, yeah, I'm going to be cheering for the Braves for sure just because I like them better than the, the Astros and, you know, less banging <laughs> going on in my backyard. So, but yeah, I don't know. I just like the way that I think the, yeah, the, just the way that the Braves have put all this talent together and how it's turned out, you know, uh, in terms of championships, in terms of just overall good play. And I don't know. I just, I think they're a likable team for me, at least. I think they're a likable team and yeah, we, you know, with Spencer Strider being like a knockout artist or strikeout person there, like that, that makes it more fun from you know a pitching standpoint. So, but yeah, I don't know. This will be a good World Series, I think. Yeah, Charlie Morton, like he was a he was a key factor in the last World Series. So you know, if if it is against the Astros, I think that could be something. So, but yeah, Charlie Morton, playoff clutch uh, pitcher extraordinaire, Max Freed. Those are guys, those are the difference makers there, and I think that they'll be able to help out uh, the Braves win a couple games here uh, in the World Series. Yeah, I, I've been from the nineties was so conditioned to not liking the Braves because they were just perennially, you know, the representative for the NL or were always like in the playoffs. It was just like, <laughs> it was kind of like tired of seeing the Braves. I wanted some new blood, but this is a completely new rendition. And, you know, just the fact they've emphasized like speed and power and they're just so dynamic. They're so much fun to watch like on the field. And, you know, they just definitely run deep. Like this is their year. And I like, there's a lot of teams that didn't win in their year, but like, this is a year that I feel like they need to win uh, just as a <laughs> franchise, but baseball is just the funniest game ever. And the weirdest things can happen. So we won't really know. Um, but I think with that, the, uh, the other question I was going to ask you outside of this or, you know, on the same topic, but 
if there was a World Series that you'd like to see from these teams in the tournament, like what would be like a really fun World Series for you? Like, what do you want to see? That's a great question. That's a great question. I mean, for me, if I if I were to pick like two teams that just would just be completely crazy and blow things up, and I'll love every second of it, I uh, I would definitely go for a team like the Twins, right? I, I was contemplating like this this twins team being like this dark horse that comes out like you know what to hell with this whole eighteen game losing streak or whatever the playoffs we're gonna run the table because I think they got that that pitching depth I think they got they got some young hitting but they also have some experienced players out there too right Carlos Correa with all those you know uh, championship runs with uh, the Astros uh, Sonny Gray he's been a playoff pitcher you know with the Athletics. Um, I don't know. Yeah, the list goes kind of on there. And yeah, they have that nice mixture of veteran presences with postseason experience. And then also uh, having, you know, some young, talented players. I think I love that combination. And yeah, would love to see, you know, if the Twins, uh, if they're able to pull it off against, you know, the the Blue Jays, it'd be, it'd be hell. I would be cheering off of my pants, basically, cheering for the Twins to defeat the Astros. I would not bet on it, but I would love to like see them actually pull it off. So, Twins, yeah, coming out of the AL there. And then coming out of the NL, again, a team to just blow things up. Uh, yeah, it would be the Marlins. That would just be nuts. If the Marlins would be like, you know what, Phillies, screw you. Uh, I know you went to the World Series you know, last year, and you have you know maybe a more balanced lineup and everything. And I know that we lost our best pitcher <laughs> right before the playoffs. And then yeah, we're, we're going to sit our, you know, best young stud pitcher as well. Uh, I would just love for them to run the table and just be like, yeah, we are your typical Miami Marlins team. where We're going to make World Series run despite like a makeshift of players out there. So that, that team, I think like that would be fun. We'd love to see Jake Berger just rake it, get all the notoriety that I think he deserves, <laughs> you know, Jack, uh, Jazz Chisholm, like he's an exciting, fun player out there that I think you know a lot of people would fall in love f- from the baseball perspective. So I don't know. I feel like that team. I would love to see that team just like run the table, maybe pull off like a, like a dark horse run there. So yeah, those are a couple of teams I would love to see. Be awesome. Yeah. Um, from my <laughs> end, I would love to see Milwaukee do a lot of things I think we're thinking about, but actually like make the actual run with their pitching staff and, you know, just some of their, some of their mix of like veterans and young guys. Like, I think they have like some pretty, you know, interesting names Like Christian Yelich has never really like taken an extra step with a team and like gotten to, you know, those heights and stuff. And like Willie Adamas has been a much better player for the Brewers than he was for the Rays. Um, Just be, it'd just be fun to see them like kind of, you know, take down some, some juggernauts like the, you know, uh, the Dodgers and then the Braves and then like make their way into the world series. And I don't know if I guess if I had a team to like match them, there would be like Toronto because I always grew up liking Toronto. They were always kind of like that. I don't know, underdog, at least for the AL East. And they won their two titles in 92, 93. Um, I used to have like these world series tapes. So I'd watch them and I was like, Oh, these blue Jays are pretty sweet. And I don't know, man, I always got behind them, but they've been, you know, kind of a disappointment every time they've gotten into the playoffs and uh, they have a lot of exciting players around their, their diamond too, like flat and um, Bichette, obviously like all these uh, second generation, you know, all-stars and stuff. Like it's pretty cool to watch them, you know, come together and, you know, they got a cool, you know, really like uh well set up rotation and everything too, that, you know, I could totally see it happening if everything rolled right for them where, you know, they were able to get their way, you know, beyond the teams in the AL that they'll go up against. So, um, I could see it happening. I think it'd be a lot of fun, um, you know, with some of their guys. And then, you know, just getting into that World Series, it'd be, you know, a ton of pitching from Milwaukee against, you know, um, I think a really competent Toronto pitching staff too. But, you know, maybe like some really, you know, low scoring, well defended type games and, you know, just kind of edging each other out and stuff. But, you know, they, they, they're actually one and two in the defensive run safe categories, uh, Toronto and Milwaukee respectively. So, you know, it would just be like really well played baseball, to be honest with you. And uh, Milwaukee's never won a World Series, so if they happen to go over, that'd be the first one they ever won. So, you know, would really be happy for that city, even though now with Giannis and Dame Lillard, and you know, winning a title recently, like maybe maybe Wisconsin and Milwaukee are like the new 
destination for sports. Yeah, it becomes Tyler Town. No, I mean, yeah, the the Brewers would be, you know, I think we have that same mindset. We just want like low scoring postseason game, like a one zero matchup, you know, like a bunt single at right, the ninth inning or something like that to drive in the run. Uh but yeah, no, there's like some nice veterans out there who I don't think that they've won a championship uh with uh the Brewers there. Uh, I mean, yeah, Yelich, you know, we, we definitely mentioned him. Uh, but yeah, Carlos Santana, I think I know he went to the World Series with, uh, you know, Cleveland and then Josh Donaldson, you know, I know he's been kind of thrown around a little bit, but he's, you know, with the Toronto, with those Toronto teams, right? He he was definitely an explosive kind of player there. Um, so yeah, I don't know that that could be fun to see some of those players uh, get a chip there. And then, yes, I see at the same time, uh, some world class pitching, world class bullpens. And I don't know, just yeah, have a lot of fun, I think, with good, good old-fashioned baseball. And I definitely think the Brewers are due for a championship. And I don't know, I really do like Craig Council as as a manager. I think, you know, he, he just knows how to get the right things out of his team, uh, play good fundamentals, and, yeah, win, win the close ones. So that could be a fun one for sure. I, I was definitely thinking them. Uh, would love to see the Brewers make a run for sure. Yeah. I think this year, more than, you know, the, the, the last uh... – you know, decades worth of baseball, maybe two decades worth, you know, baseball. Mm-hmm. It's going to, I think this, this whole like set of playoffs can be the most fun that we've watched in a long time based on just how the timing of the game is sped up. You know, the, the elements of bringing in speed to the game, like reinserting speed back into the game where you have stolen bases and you know, guys really going for it. And then getting rid of this stupid shift, you know, it's like, it's just nice to watch. You know, players have the opportunity to like, hey, if I hit a, if a smoking liner to the right side of the field, there's not going to be like three, you know, three, three players all positioned there, you know, waiting for it. So it's just opened up the game a lot more. Um, yeah, I'm just totally looking forward to Tuesday and you know, seeing how this whole thing plays out. Yeah, I, I what, what what team maybe like the past? I mean, we talked a little bit about this before. What team are like the, maybe the past? 23 years or so uh do you miss like like from that description that you made of like speed you know maybe some good old-fashioned defense and and pitching dude this is crazy for me to say because i grew up obviously a white Sox fan like passionate white Sox fan but like i loved the 1990s uh cleveland indians teams loved them i seriously just enjoyed their mix of power and speed. You had guys like Lofton, Almar Vizquel on the speed side of things. And then you had Manny, Dave Justice, Jim Tomey, you know, like Travis Fryman, Sandy Almar, more on the power side of things. They never really assembled a pitching staff. So it was always just like <laughs> whatever Cleveland can, you know, put together in this game. Like, and they drop like, you know, seven to 10 runs a game and stuff. But man, those are just, I mean, a lot of those guys are in the Hall of Fame or like, you know, knocking at the door almost and it's yeah it's just kind of cool to look back i mean they never won one uh which is like the saddest part of it all they were so close uh on a couple of occasions but yeah man i always enjoyed the iterate the new iterations of the cleveland indians teams year over year um even though they never made it but how about you yeah i mean definitely like the indians and everything at that time uh like manny ramirez as like your eighth hitter like that that's just nuts right uh, yeah. to even think or fathom about um but yeah i know for me like you know a team that i liked a uh, championship team that won a world series in 2015 that i really admired was the kansas city royals right uh they had you know a, a really well balanced lineup right i think i'm looking at it right now they had salvador perez uh hosmer uh omar fonte uh escobar mustakas alex gordon Kane, Rios, Morales, like a really well balanced, and yeah, Ben Zobrice, really we just well balanced team. Like, like some some of those hitters can definitely slug it, but nobody's like uh, you know a Jim Tomei type of caliber a slugger. Uh, but yeah, they, you know everybody can hit for average, uh, uh, hit a, you know have some power here and there, and then yeah they had some speedsters on there, right? You know ones a Kane, but then they also had Dyson as well. Uh, kind of coming off the bench and you just knew he was going to steal the ball. So, and I don't know, all those players, I feel like they play kind of the game, right? Not to sound too old school, but 
Yeah, they, they play the game like all fundamental baseball all around, good defense, you know, not not necessarily trying to slug like a, you know, Joey Gallo or Adam Dunn type of, you know, fiasco that we see so much in today's baseball, right? Where you just either you hit a homer, you walk, or you strike out, and that's okay. Like, no, let's let's put some uh let's put the bat on the ball. And I really like that and wired about them. And then yeah, the pitching, I think they really fostered or they, they kind of kicked off more so of you know, getting to the bullpen. Let's have an awesome bullpen. Let's have good enough starting pitching. Uh, cause man, that gets expensive. So, uh, yeah, let's have good enough, good enough starting pitching. They gets to the bullpen. They just have a lock down bullpen, you know, uh, yeah, over there. So I think that was like one of my favorite teams just to cheer for. Yeah. Like having Wade Davis over there, uh, Cueto, the bullpen, Greg Holland and Kelvin Herrera, like that, that whole scenario, I think, was really just cool to see those players just own the playoffs, basically. And yeah, for me, I was just cheering for middle relief pitchers uh, during that time. So yeah, that was, I feel like for me, that was just a good team to like cheer for. Sure. Yeah, no, I, I really like the Royals teams in uh, 14 and 15. I mean, when they came up short against the Giants, I was like super bummed because I think that was the, the third title in the Giants uh, reign there. Mm-hmm. So it was definitely getting old at that point, but no, I, I agree with you. And, I, and honestly, I think baseball is starting to trend more that way. I think there's, there's more power. Um, I think across the board right now with most of the teams coming out in this like revamped, you know, view of baseball with the time clock and the big bases and the new shift rules and stuff like that. But I definitely see the element of speed brought back into the game. Um, you know, from a pitching perspective, we're looking at some teams in this run that had some have some pretty deep bullpen. So I'm like, you know, wondering what's you know what a Tampa Bay type team can do, or you know, uh, Milwaukee for an example. Like they might be a very interesting team to see, you know, how deep they can actually go. But like, no, that you're right. That trio of guys like Herrera to Holland to Wade Davis. I mean, it was it was over once you got to the seventh inning. It was like it was kind of hysterical at a certain point, but. uh yeah, man. No, that's a good team, and uh, yeah, good to good to kind of think back here. Um, so I guess uh, you know, with that, this is our baseball you know overview for you know the twenty twenty three playoffs. We obviously you know pick the same teams uh, representing the leagues and going into the World Series and winning the World Series, but anything can happen. So uh, you know, definitely tune in. Um, I guess with that, we can uh, we can close out on some final thoughts. So Wayne, why don't you uh, kick it off? Yeah. Um, well, I guess my final thoughts, uh, you know, uh, I, I've been kind of, you know, I know you were kind of in a, like a heart, like, like a seltzer type of, uh, sparkling water type of kick there. Um, I've been into yogurt of late, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, uh, I think one yogurt I want to call out more so of, um, is uh, Helenos Greek yogurt. It's one of my favorite yogurts out there. Uh, it just tastes so good. It's kind of like a buttery type of yogurt out there. Helenos Greek yogurt uh, out of like the Seattle area. Like every time I go to the airport and it's like, you know, usually I like to go to the airport and like a little early, grab a snack, maybe a cup of coffee, something like that in like the Seattle area. And they have Helenos Greek yogurt like everywhere you can get, you know, you can get it at, uh, those, you know, magazine type of stand places. You can get it at most like coffee places because it's a nice, you know, breakfast thing too. So, but yeah, I don't know, it's Greek yogurt, amazing like yogurt that they have. There's like a lemon uh, type of yogurt and then there's like a mixed berry yogurt. Like those two are just phenomenal. And I, I just want to say like I miss though that that yogurt. Like I, I look it up, see if I, I can like online ship it, but I don't know if I trust online ship yogurt uh, to me here. Uh, so, but yeah, I don't know. Patrick, do you like yogurt? Do you got any like hitters like that out there? Um, <laughs> or I don't know. What what do you think about yogurt these days? <laughs> yeah, like let me let me roll up with some Trix yogurt or some Gogurt and you know, have a good time. No, but all, in all seriousness, uh no, I, I do like uh yogurt. I have yogurt almost every day. Uh I'm not a plain Greek yogurt kind of person. Like I need to have some flavoring because it's just too funky for me on its own, but I Usually I'll have like Chiban or um, what's the Oikos, uh, mm-hmm. no sugar, but it's flavored. So there's different. I like peach. Uh, I like the you know mixed berry and stuff. And 
What I've noticed though, is like, if I just eat the yogurt straight, it's definitely not as good as when I like, you know, throw some blueberries through the, through the sink and just like add like real berries to it. Um, I like to add some chia. Um, at times I have like a kind of like an oatmeal cluster type thing that I can drop in the cup as well. But is, the more stuff I can put in there, especially fresh fruit, I feel like it's the best, like especially blueberry on blueberry. I think like that's the, that's like the pinnacle of like yogurt flavor that I get, um, you know, most mornings and stuff. So no, mm. I'm definitely, I'm definitely down. And uh, for Elenos, is it, is it plain or do you like, do you jazz it up at all? It doesn't need to be. Uh, it it, mm. it it tastes like it it, it kind of tastes buttery. I think that like even the plain, like if it was just a plain like Greek yogurt, like no uh, lemon or mixed berry type of uh, syrup or whatever, um, yeah, it just tastes phenomenal. Like I could just eat that, but you know, lo and behold, they put you know, put a little bit of flavor in there and it tastes amazing. So yeah, I like I like just even eating like you know the the simple white materials of the yogurt and doesn't have to have necessarily all these other flavors in there for me at least it tastes really good but you know i've only had it really with the different type of flavoring so um would be interesting to try it you know try it like with uh i don't know some like flax seeds or some granola with like some honey and maybe a blueberries like things like that i i tend to like you know with just normal greek yogurt if i'm feeling like all right i just want something pure without anything else but that really ever happens i think <laughs> That only happened like one week in my life where I was like, all right, I'm just going to be supremely healthy and not care about, you know, uh, having everything in all in one container all at once. I was like, all right, I'm going to be raw, be cool. And then, yeah, went to a store, went to like Whole Foods, got uh, honey, uh, and then went, went to another store, got blueberries, and then put it in that, you know, plain Greek yogurt. So those days are gone. I'm just rolling with, all right, I'm going to pick whatever's on the shelf. And regretfully, yeah, it hasn't been Elenos. Uh, I did try this like overnight oats mixed berry yogurt. I think it's like vegan or whatever. This is pretty decent, but um, yeah, does not match the levels, I think, of Elenos. Uh, but I do like Shobani. Uh, I, I like the company. I think, I believe they gave like, uh, they made a bunch of their employees, like their, their, uh, uh, warehouse employees like millionaires like overnight by giving them stock options or something like that um so you know good overall company i think there yeah no i'm glad you brought it up it's a good source of protein it's lean um you know after workout or something like that it's just a good way to get you know uh filled i even think like late at night and stuff you want to avoid dessert or whatever else like maybe you you know or, or kind of maybe at an early dinner and you're just getting hungry toward the end of your night like it's a great way to kind of just fill up real quickly and you know uh not add a bunch of calories fat whatever else it could be so yeah that's yeah that's no, exactly what i did there. that's exactly what i did so. <laughs> but uh yeah how about how about want to hear about your final thought all right well we're gonna stay on health uh i feel like we did this last week and i i feel like i had one thing that was missing and you know in today's current economic environment uh not a lot of folks like want to go out and spend 15, 20 bucks on a salad. Like I totally get that, especially if you're getting it delivered and the fees start accruing and stuff like that. So I'm going to make this really simple for you um, at home, especially um, this may be common knowledge to some folks, but man, I, I like looked around and like, it kind of hit me in the face and I like was kind of mad that I never thought about in the past, but these pre-cooked chicken strips that are like all white meat, um, you know, no antibiotics, things like that. Like they sell big packages of them all across grocery stores. Um, Wegmans has really good quality ones, especially Costco. They can get them in the really big value pack size. You could even probably find it like your Jewel, Safeway, Giant, like whatever you know region you're in. Um, maybe hit or miss on the you know quality, but I think Nature's Promise is pretty good. But when I found out about these like pre cooked strips, it completely eliminated the fifteen dollar you know salad for me because especially if you're at Costco, you can buy like big multi-pack salad kits and, you know, you get Caesar, you can do, um, you know, there's Southwest style, there is, you know, apples and nuts. There's all sorts of stuff that usually come with, you know, some sort of lighter dressings. Um, you know, I've had one with a different like aioli in it. Like there, there's all these different, you know, types of packs that you can end up buying, but essentially like 
on a daily basis uh, throughout my work week, I usually just eat big bowls of salad and I can just, you know, pull from the bigger bags of chicken, make my, you know, salad kit or whatever else it is. And like, I think overall it's probably ranging in like the five to $8 range per meal. And just, just such a good week, like kind of way to eat. Like it eliminates the bread, eliminates, you know, lunch meat, eliminates whatever else you may go out and buy, you know, at a restaurant, if you're, if you're going into the office or something like that. But yeah, if you work at home, telework remote, or if you just want to bring something into the office, like I think going down the line of like checking out different grocery store salad kits, um, you know, Wegmans, Costco, all the grocery store chains that I just named, they all have different brands and different styles. So like, it's kind of an exploration, man. Like, I think it's, I think it's great. And, uh, you know, I've also added like fruit, you know, for my own fridge, like into these salads. So, you know, any other ingredients you want to throw on top of what the kit puts together, like just makes things super easy for you. So yeah. Um, just want to spit that knowledge out there. I know Wayne, you like sweet green and other stuff, but do you have any other thoughts on salad overall or, you know, prepping it at home? Yeah, no, I mean, no, it, it totally makes sense. And I, I do that. Uh, and then I'm like, you know what? Sweet greens, they got some other like nice stuff that maybe I want to put in there. Uh, they have like a nice barbecue, you know, a chicken salad of some sort. They got that harvest bowl, which I love. And it's got like a, you know, a variety of different things there. So, but yeah, no, like it, I think uh, like a nice chicken salad and having different variations in there. You know, if you want to put some couscous or some hummus in there too, like I think that, you know, is a great combination over there. Again, as long as it's, you know, healthy and you enjoy it, I think that's all kind of what we're aiming for. So, but yeah, you know, that's, that sounds good. Cause I, what I used to do usually like would, I would just go to like Costco and get that, um, that rotisserie chicken and then get like a big salad. And then, that, then you know, maybe some like, uh, um, some like wild cherry, uh, 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 tomatoes or something like that, or, you know, add in some cheese, like, that's basically it for me. And that would, you know, last me for a week. So any type of combination like that, I think is great. And, you know, if it saves you a buck or two, even better. Yeah. I think, I think the reason why I bring it up is like when I used to think about like putting together a salad, it just sounds like so much work. Cause it's like, Oh, I got to chop up all these different vegetables. I've got to, you know, get a, you know, bag or a, you know, carton of greens. And then I've got to go like search around for dressings on the aisle and stuff. And like, the salad kit had always been kind of like overlooked to me. Like I would just look at it and be like, okay, that's just sitting there on the shelf or whatever next to, you know, the individually, you know, wrapped uh, kale or whatever else on the shelf, uh, arugula, whatever it could be. And uh, yeah, just once I started trying it, I was like, I can bang out salads in like literally 30 seconds. And I'm like, I'm done. And there's no cleanup. There's nothing else to do. And half the time when I'm thinking about going out and, you know, trying to find food, you know, at least to make it home, it's like, I'm looking for minimal effort, you know, minimal energy spent here now. And it's like, yeah. this is becoming as easy as like, obviously throwing anything into the oven. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'll just put it that way. It's like save so much time and I know I'm just eating, you know, much oh, yeah. better. Yeah. 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 And I, I think like, yeah, Jewel, like there's been like sales, you can get like three for nine or something like that. Three for 10. Um, you know, basically, yeah, I, 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 you know, yeah, it comes like in like a bowl, like a plastic bowl. And then, uh, we have with the salad with some protein, uh, you know, maybe some croutons or something like that, or, you know, some corn. And then, yeah, sometimes there's like some cranberries or an apple in there. Like, and yeah, it's nice and colorified because I think they put some vinegar on the, on the apple. So it doesn't brown, like things like that just make it nice and appealing. So shout out to salad kits, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're, we're all being healthy here like you know i thought i thought we we're, were trying to get ready for a uh, swimsuit season again or what but no i I, <laughs> I definitely love a good salad you know for lunch and yeah as we're getting in our later 30s we got yeah we got to think healthy here so <laughs> yeah well after we've come you know covered the gamut on every single junk food category <laughs> possible I think it was only, you know, right that we started going down, you know, greener lanes but I think we'll be back to some of the ball and you know breakfast staples in terms of our conversations because those are those are the meals that we really like to talk about at the end of the day yeah i mean we definitely like our yolo meals but yeah there's definitely like the everyday basis let's not try to die by the time we're like 40 so yeah, <laughs> yeah for sure well uh yeah um you know if you guys are around uh you know this week during the day if you got 
you know, a lighter work schedule, you know, fire up some baseball, have, have a salad, have some yogurt, whatever else you may be doing at home while you're working, if you're remote or on telework or whatever else it could be. Um, yeah, we're really looking forward to it. Um, if you enjoyed this episode, you know, give us a like, subscribe to the channel, do the same on Instagram, follow us. Um, if you're on audio, you know, leave us a review, uh, some stars, uh, five preferably. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you pretty soon as we, uh, you know, move back into the next uh, week of football too. So keep your eye out for for more videos here from from the Ball and Breakfast podcast um, with Wayne. I'm Patrick as always, and we'll see you soon.